What's up, losers? My name is Paige. And just like a lot of people who grew up in the era of YouTube legends like Smosh, Jenna Marbles, and Rhett and Link, I consume a lot of content. I would say that YouTube is probably my primary source of entertainment 99% of the time, followed only by Twitch. And most of the time, I have a YouTube video pulled up on my phone or on my TV in the background, even when I'm working on other things. I am a content junkie. I can't get enough. Over the last 15 years of watching things on YouTube, I've explored a lot of different communities. Beauty, drama, commentary, education, vlogging, gaming, the list goes on. After years of exploring these communities and watching what is quite frankly an ungodly and almost embarrassing amount of content, I realized that my favorite creators are the ones who remind me of myself. Normal people doing things and making content out of it. And that's when it hit me. I could do that. I want to do that. I don't think I want to be on the sidelines anymore. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to become a content creator. The problem with that thought, of course, is that I'm far from the only person who is delusional enough to think that they could just do this, to just jump in and start making content. In fact, it wasn't even the first time I'd had that thought for myself. My very first YouTube video was filmed and uploaded 14 years ago. My best friend and I sat down at her grandma's computer with our crappy webcam and a crappy mic and made a video. We just did it. And no one stopped us. In fact, in that video that we uploaded 14 years ago, I may have had YouTube's very first face reveal. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a trendsetter. Later down the line, when I got into junior high, I discovered the magical world of karaoke tracks on YouTube and decided I needed to try again. I was gonna make it big as a singer on YouTube. You would not believe your eyes as 10 million fireflies lit up the world as I fell asleep. I'm waiting for this cough syrup to come down, come down. It's not unusual to see me cry, I want to die. I started filming videos of myself in my bedroom and uploading them to Facebook so that my family and friends could see them. And I got about six videos in before maturity caught up with me and my overthinking and anxiety told me to stop. Thank God. <laughs> Even though my dreams of becoming a famous singer on YouTube had been thwarted, the idea of making content never fully left me. Last year, I started this channel. And after falling down the rabbit hole of watching and listening to podcasts, I decided why not me? I'll start one of my own. So I did. No money, no prospects. Had a glorious three episode run last spring. Unfortunately, between burnout and running out of ideas and getting tired of talking to myself in an empty room, I kind of called it quits. It wasn't my time. After putting my podcast on indefinite hiatus, I thought I'd beaten the itch to make content. I was over it. I was ready to go back to just being a normal viewer. So in the words of Paramore, how did we get here? To talk about how we got here, I think we have to go back in time first. When I was in junior high going into high school, my very favorite type of videos to watch were daily vlogs. I would come home, turn on my tablet, and sit down for hours and hours and hours to watch YouTubers living their life. Zoella, Anthony Padilla, Alfie Days, O2L, all of them, every day, every day. Let that sink in. Slowly, over the course of a few months, it hit me that I was spending all of my free time watching these people live their life not living my own. And how does that make any sense? <laughs> now, at 14 years old, that felt like an epiphany. Of course I'm not gonna be happy about my own life. I'm watching the best bits and pieces highlights reel of a YouTuber and comparing myself to them. I'm never gonna be happy if I keep doing that. So what do I do instead? 
At 14 years old, I feel like most of us don't have a lot going for us outside of school, maybe some hobbies and some friends. So I did what any normal 14 year old would do. I focused on my schoolwork and started trying to become a successful adult. And I did. I graduated high school, got into college, went to college, got my bachelor's degree, graduated, started my first big kid job. And then six months into my first big kid job, COVID hit. When COVID hit, we were no longer allowed to come into the office for our job, which meant I was at home all the time with my TV, with YouTube open. I had just discovered a new group of content creators that I really liked and their content became a source of comfort for me. It was a distraction from the stress and the chaos of the life I had going. Locked in my house, not seeing my friends, not seeing my family. In a way, it almost felt like friends and family watching these creators. I think a lot of people had a very similar experience during COVID, but I think I took it too far. At the time, I had never heard of the word parasocial, and yet, I was very actively and quickly becoming parasocial. It's almost hard to believe that there was a time that that wasn't a word in my vocabulary. But it applied. I was watching hours and hours and hours of these YouTubers content. I was spending my whole life watching other people instead of living. I felt justified in it because it was COVID. What living am I supposed to be doing right now? Pretty quickly, watching YouTube became my only hobby once again, which is depressing. But COVID was depressing, so it didn't really strike me as strange at the time. I would clock out from work, sit down on the couch, put on YouTube, and watch any commentary creator just talk about anything. It was entertaining, and YouTube kept showing me more and more and more of the same things. I discovered more content creators. It really felt endless, and I was happy with it. Until I wasn't. Over the months, YouTube took over my brain. All I could talk about was the creators I was watching and the videos that they were putting out and how cool they were and how much I wanted to be like them and how much I wanted to be friends with them. I truly believed that if you put me in a room full of all of my favorite content creators, I would walk out besties with all of them. But that's that parasocial part. And that's not healthy. <laughs> that's delusion. During that time, nothing was normal. I wasn't leaving my house. I wasn't seeing my friends. I wasn't doing anything in my real life. So I lost a grip on reality and that parasocial delusional part of my brain was allowed to take free reign. There was no counterbalance to tell me, hey, that's not how things work in the real world. What did the real world even function like at that point? I didn't know. So I just kept going. I fell deeper and deeper and deeper down the content hole until suddenly I was sitting at the bottom and I realized I was doing the exact same thing that I did in junior high. I was spending all of my time watching other people live their life. And now I had the same problem to solve. How do I break out of that? And how do I get back to living my own life? I had already successfully gotten myself out of this situation once. So I decided to do the same thing again. I was gonna focus on myself and focus on being a successful adult. And it worked for a time, but I kept coming back to the content. I kept wanting to watch more. So then I thought, maybe there's a reason I'm coming back to this. Maybe there's something here for me. Slowly, in bits and pieces, I started examining my relationship with YouTube. Why did I feel so compelled to watch every piece of content that a certain creator put out? Why did I like the creators that I liked? Eventually, I came to the answer that I like the things that I like on YouTube because I want to be like them. I want to be like my favorite creators. I think they're fun and entertaining and they can be educational. I learned so much just by watching goofy little videos. I want to be that. I want to provide comfort and excitement and entertainment for people. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that that wasn't necessarily a new concept for me either. I was a choir and theater kid in high school. I loved to get out on stage and perform for people. I love telling jokes when other people laugh at them. Maybe there's a part of me that needs to feel like I'm performing. But there's a second thing that I really like about YouTube, 
And that's the creativity that's on this platform. Every time I open the app, there's a new video, a new topic, a new idea that I've never thought about before. And I love engaging with that. Everybody is creative. And that's something I feel like I'm missing in my day-to-day -day life. For the most part, I wake up and I do the same things every day. I go to work, I come home, I eat dinner, I go to bed, I wake up, rinse, wash, repeat. There's not a whole lot of opportunities for me to express my own creativity or try new things. And so, finally, we come back to the question, how did we get here? And why are we here? And it's just that. This channel seems like the best opportunity for me to flex my creativity and learn new things and try something different, trying to bring some variety into my life. This is the first time I've genuinely been excited about a project in a long time, and I'm not gonna let that slip by. I've finally found a way to merge living my real life with content. I would be dumb to not try. Now, I can't lie, I do feel like I'm overthinking every step of this process. This whole video feels like one big exercise in overthinking. But something I'm trying out is just jumping in and doing things, even if I'm overthinking it, even if I'm anxious about it. Heck, the other night I just streamed for the first time on Twitch. I was so scared to start that stream, but I had so much fun doing it. And I think it really solidified for me that this is something that I want to try. I'm under no impression that this is gonna go anywhere. This is just me talking to myself in a room and the only people who are gonna watch it are probably me and maybe my siblings and my parents and a few friends. And that's okay because it's not for everybody else. This is a personal exercise for me and I'm excited to see how it turns out. The sun is starting to go down and the frame rate on my webcam is dropping so I'm gonna have to wrap this up pretty quickly. But in conclusion, I think I've finally found a healthy balance in my life between content and living. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see how much I learned during this process. I feel like I've already learned so much. And honestly, I'm excited to keep going. I may be lying. This may be the only time I ever post to this channel again. But I feel like I've got a little bit more excitement behind things now. And I'm a little more motivated to do it. So we'll see. I have a lot of big ideas, and I would love to see them come to fruition. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're related to me, please don't watch anything else after this. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, thank you, genuinely. I'm excited to go on this journey, and if you want to come along with me, feel free to subscribe. Drop a comment. Let me know if you've had similar issues with YouTube and content, Twitch, TikTok, any of it. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, this has been Paige, and I'll catch you on the flip side.